In this video, you and I get to set up a Cisco router to act as a certificate authority for issuing digital certificates. We're also going to set up a second router acting as a client to both authenticate and enroll with that CA server. One key element of using RSA signatures for authentication of either Ike version 1 or Ike version 2 is to make sure we have digital certificates installed on the devices that want to use them. To do that, we're going to need some kind of a common certificate authority who can issue certificates. And in this micro-nugget, you and I are going to create a certificate authority out of an iOS router and then train an iOS client to use that certificate authority. We're going to configure R5 to act as our certificate authority server. So to do that, let's first of all start off and enable HTTP server on R5. SCEP, the Simple Certificate Enrollment Protocol, uses HTTP for the authentication and enrollment of its clients. Next, we'll put a minimum configuration in for the server. The syntax is crypto PKI server, and the name we want to call it. The issuer name is going to be CA in the organization called cbtnuggets.com. We'll tell it to go ahead and automatically grant requests for certificates that come in, and then we'll bring it up with a no shutdown command. It's asking for a password. It's asking me to confirm the password, and that's going to protect the private key from the private public key pair that has just been generated for its own digital certificate. To verify, we'd use the command show crypto PKI server to see the details of this CA server. So here's the grant of auto. Here's the issuer name, which is ourself. So now this CA server is enabled and active. Before we make R1 a certificate authority client, let's make sure we have basic connectivity between R1 and the loopback address on R5. And we do, that's a great start. Next, let's go into configuration mode and use the command crypto key generate RSA. And I'm going to specify a modulus of 2048. And I'm also going to create a label to give to this RSA public private key pair that we're creating. And the label I'm going to give it is r1.cbtnuggets.com. It could be Bubba or John or whatever you want to refer to this specific key pair. Now that R1 has the public private key pair, let's go ahead and tell R1 about this beautiful certificate authority. The syntax for that is crypto PKI trust point, And then we're just going to use a locally significant name. In this case, we'll call it trusted CA. Now R1 may be wondering, hey, if I ever want to enroll with this certificate authority, which means request my own identity certificate, what is the IP address? And what's the protocol I can use to reach this CA server? So we're going to specify enrollment URL HTTP colon whack whack and the IP address of R5. And because we verified reachability already and we also enabled HTTP on R5, we should be good to go. If we want to specifically identify which RSA key pair we want to use for the enrollment with that certificate authority, we can specify it by name. In this case, RSA key pair and the label of r1.cptnuggets.com. We can also add other information like the fully qualified domain name or subject name that will go into any enrollment request we give up to this certificate authority server. I'm also going to disable revocation checks indicating I'm not going to try to do revocation checks to verify whether or not a digital certificate has been revoked by the CA. One of the critical things R1 is going to need, it's going to need a copy of the CA's public key. And the best way to get that is to ask for a copy of the CA's digital certificate, which contains the CA's public key. And to get that, we're going to use the syntax crypto PKI authenticate, and then the name of our PKI trust point. In this case, it's trusted-CA. So in the background, a request went out via HTTP saying, hey, I'd like a copy of your certificate. It's now showing us the fingerprint of that certificate. And if we want to accept it, we simply type in yes. And now we have that certificate, the root certificate on this router. We could verify that with the command show crypto PKI certificates, and we're only going to have one so far, and that's the CA servers. So here is the issuer of the certificate, which is the CA server himself, the subject of the certificate, which is the CA server itself, and the validity dates for that certificate. It's at this point that we can go ahead and enroll with that CA. Enrollment is effectively saying, hey, here's all the information about me. Here's my public key. Here's my identity information. I would like, I'm requesting, says the enrollment process, I'm requesting my own identity certificate. Will you grant it to me? So we're being asked for a password that we might have to supply later if we ever want the certificate authority and the administrators there to revoke the certificate, which they're about to give us. So I'm going to put in the password and confirm the password. And now it's stating this information is going to go into the certificate. Would you also like the serial number as part of the information in the certificate? And we may decide, yeah, this hardware may change. I'm not going to go ahead and include that in the certificate. So we'll say no to that. And that's asking, do you want to include an IP address? And if we have a static public facing IP address, we might want to include that. So I'm going to say yes to that. And then we'll put in the IP address of 15.0.0.1, which happens to be the internet facing IP address in my lab environment for R1. 
And that says, okay, have all this information. Do you want to make the request for your own identity certificate? And I'm going to type in yes. And in just a moment, we've been issued our own identity certificate. And to verify that, we can do a show crypto PKI certificates. There's also the option to use the keyword verbose to see more details about the certificates. And this first certificate in the list is our identity certificate that describes us, or in this case, I should say R1. It was issued by the CA server. And below that, we have the Certificate Authority's digital certificate information. And that's how we can, in a lab environment, simply set up Certificate Authorities and clients in just a few minutes. And then, with those certificates in place, we could use features such as RSA signatures for the authentication of Ike version 1 or Ike version 2. I have had a great time. I'm so glad you joined me for this micro nugget. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.